this is Top Accolade Global News Update. I am Abiodun Mohammed. Russian cruise missiles exploded in the air over Kiev on Tuesday, and tanks and soldiers assembled in Red Square for a military parade as Moscow marked the anniversary of victory over the Nazis with a new attack on Ukraine. Ukraine said its air defenses shot down 23 of 25 missiles, fired chiefly at the capital Kiev, and there were no reported casualties. It was the second night in a row of major Russian airstrikes and fifth so far this month. Sergei Popko, head of the Kiev city military administration, said the Russians were trying to kill civilians, in quotes, as at the front, the plans of the aggressor failed. Debris fell on a house in the Olosivsky district in the southwest of Kiev but caused little damage. Kiev mayor Vitaly Klitschko said debris lay in a road in the often targeted Chevchekinsky district of central Kiev. Moscow denies targeting civilians and says its airstrikes are aimed at reducing Ukraine's ability to fight. It has stepped up its attacks this month in anticipation of a looming Ukrainian counteroffensive after a failed Russian winter campaign captured little ground despite the bloodiest ground combat in Europe since World War II. May 9th, which marks the day of Germany's surrender in 1945, is the most important holiday in Russia under President Vladimir Putin, who says his country is again fighting for survival after what the West calls his unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. Israel killed three Islamic Jihad commanders and 10 civilians in surprise airstrikes in Gaza on Tuesday, Palestinian officials said, drawing threats of reprisals from the faction and censor from Egypt, which has mediated past ceasefires in the enclave, signaling it anticipated an imminent flare-up. Israel closed roads in Israeli towns near Gaza, instructed residents there to keep close to bomb shelters, and said it was calling up some military reservists. Images on social media showed Iron Dome rocket interceptor batteries being trucked to the front. The scope of any escalation could hinge on whether Gaza's ruling Hamas militants take part as they did in the 2021 war in a bid to deter them, Israeli Security Cabinet Minister Israel Katz told Tel Aviv radio station that Hamas leaders could be targeted for assassination too. While the Israeli occupied West Bank and Jerusalem have seen a spread of grassroots violence over the past year, exchanges of fire across the Gaza border have also intensified, most recently following the death last week of an Islamic Jihad leader on hunger strike in Israeli custody. Islamic Jihad identified the commanders killed on Tuesday as Jihad Ghanam, Khalil al-Batini, and Tarek Izeldin. The Iranian-sponsored group is on terrorist watch list in the West. Medical officials said 10 civilians, including four children and five women, were also killed in the strikes that hit residential areas in congested Gaza, where 2.3 million Palestinians live on 365 square kilometers. China's foreign ministry will expel a Canadian diplomat from the country's Shanghai consulate as a reciprocal countermeasure. Hours after Canada declared a Chinese diplomat in China's Toronto consulate as persona non grata over alleged involvement in a campaign to intimidate a Canadian legislator critical of Beijing, in quote, as a reciprocal countermeasure in reaction to Canada's unscrupulous move, China decides to declare Jennifer Lynn Lalonde, consul of the Consulate General of Canada in Shanghai, persona non grata. China's foreign ministry said in a statement, Lalund has been asked to leave China before May 13th, it added. In a statement on Monday, Canadian Foreign Minister Melanie Jolly said Ottawa would expel Chinese diplomat Zhao Wei over the intimidation campaign. The furor began last month when Canada's The Globe and Mail newspaper reported that Beijing had sought information about a Canadian legislator's relatives who may be in China in a likely effort to, in quote, make an example of this MP by targeting his next of kin in order to deter others in Canada from taking positions against the People's Republic of China, DRC. Rioting and ethnic clashes last week in India's Manipur have killed at least 62 people and displaced 35,000 officials say. As a tense calm prevails across the remote northeastern state, Manipur's chief minister N. Biren Singh told reporters late on Monday that about 230 people were injured and 1,700 houses 
bond in the violence. Fierce fighting broke out in Manipur between members of about 30 tribal groups and a non-tribal group. The ethnic majority Meite over economic, educational and political benefits extended to some tribes. Police in the state capital, Impal, said 62 people were killed in the fighting that had raged in the hills and some parts of the valley, but there was no violence over the weekend. A report on Monday in India said the death toll hit 65. White three politicians in the state ruling Bharatiya Janata Party BJP said in a Reuters news agency report that it was about 70. Singh said thousands of civilians escorted by security personnel were now returning home after the situation was brought under control by police officers and soldiers patrolling the streets and enforcing a dawn to dusk curfew, which is still in place. A high court in Malawi has ordered education authorities to admit learners with dreadlocks in public schools across the country. The court, sitting in the eastern city of Zumba, was ruling on a petition brought by two Rastafarian children who were refused admission to public schools in 2016 and 2010. The two learners have, however, been attending school after they obtained a court injunction. Talks between the Rastafarian community in Malawi and the country's Anthony General to settle the matter have failed resulting in a prolonged legal suit whose determination was made on Monday. Judge Zioni Ntaba ruled that barring children with dreadlocks from attending school was a breach of their right to education. The case was filed by three human rights organizations on behalf of the Rastafarian community in the country. That is the size of Top Accolade Global News Update. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your screen. Happy Tuesday!